I'm live. It is Saturday and it is early evening. Beautiful day here today, 27th of May 2023. And um, I have a bit more to read and I would like to finish it before next weekend, if possible. These are not the most cheerful chapters. It is Out of Winged Pharaoh, written by Joan Grant. Um, in, published in 1937, she is Sepita. This is a far memory book. She is the daughter of Pharaoh, who has now passed, and she is in training to co-rule with her brother Nea. She is now doing the ordeals. She has been in the temple for over five years, and we are here in the fourth part of this novel, of this book, of this memory. Chapter 4, The False Priest Then I went to one who had been a priest of Anubis in the little temple of Atlanta. He was the only true dreamer in that temple where the light should have, done, should have shone, but he had blunted his will and had lost his sleep memory, for he had become a suited mirror that no longer reflected the light. He was too lazy to strive to recapture his lost power, yet he was too proud to admit his failure. So he recounted that which was not true, and which was but a weaving of his earth thoughts. And when the time came that the prophecy of doom was heard by all true priests, those who came to his temple received it not, and with their false priest perished beneath the water, and with their false priest perished beneath the water. For more than two thousand years he has dwelled alone in a temple whose courts echo to his solidary footsteps. Here there are statues of gods whose faces he knows not. He prays to them although he knows that their ears are deaf and their hearts are of stone, for he can reach no others. And he prays to them that there may be one still left in this land of desolation who may come to him for he thinks that all the world perished because of his sin often he stands at the gate of the temple looking out upon an endless plain sometimes he sees a loved child running towards him and he thinks that his parents are answered that his prayers are answered but as he touches it it is as though his hands were white hot, for the child shrivels before him, shrivels before him, and he holds but a figurine of charred wood. Sometimes he sees one walking towards him in the robe of a true priest, but as he clasps his hand in greeting, he finds that he holds the whitened bones of the long drowned. Sometimes he sees his mother walking towards him with infinite compassion on her face, but when he touches her, he finds water weeds dripping between his fingers. Sometimes upon the barren plain he sees in the distance flowers growing, but as he runs towards them, they turn to a reef of coral that's cut, that cuts his feet. When I came to him, he stood before me, not daring to stretch out his hands lest I should turn to ashes at his touch. I put my hands upon his shoulders and he drowned, and his drowned face was lit with a radiance, and I said to him, your time has come, you will return to earth to train your memory, and it will take you five lives to gain that perfection which once you should have had, but your great loneliness is ended, in five months you will be born from your mother's womb and feel the gentle comfort of her arms, for your companions you will have three brothers, and when you are seven, a sea will come to your house and he will say that in your twelfth year you must go to the temple to be trained and the time shall come when you will bring a wisdom to those on earth and you shall express your knowledge in such words that you shall be known as the priest of the silver tongue okay that was um, chapter 4 of part 4 the false priest Interesting, isn't it?